How's it going everyone? Landon with Late Model Restoration. Today is the day I bring you guys a video that is long overdue. Part three of the Vortex Supercharger install into our 93 hatch is finally here and boy do I have some stuff to tell you guys. Let's get to it. First and foremost, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at parts one and two, go ahead and get them out of your way. That way you can see what I've already accomplished thus far. I'm gonna shoot straight from the hip here, guys, and be totally honest with you on why the results took as long as they did. For one, we are the Fox Mustang enthusiasts, so when a problem arises, by golly, we're gonna fix it. That means we aren't going to pay said speed shop to do the work for us and then claim the fruits of their labor. In a nutshell, I'm working with a 93 Fox Mustang that is in immaculate shape. It does have low miles, but it is also a theft recovery car. When it was found, it was pieced back together with some decent parts and it made great power. However, like most things, I took it for granted and expected everything to go a little bit smoother than it actually did. Upon completion of the Vortex Supercharger, I strapped the car to our dyno and made a pull. After seeing the results, I knew something wasn't quite right. I attempted another pull and achieved the same disappointing results. The car was taking less power with the Vortex Supercharger than it was in naturally aspirated trim. After staring aimlessly into space and going back and forth with a few employees, it was time to hook up a boost gauge and a fuel pressure gauge to get some baseline readings. Well, lo and behold, fuel pressure was dropping to as low as 20 PSI when the car got into boost, and on top of that, it was only making six pounds of boost. Now, dealing with a 24-year-old car and it being at that recovery, where do I even start? The car itself needed an engine bay refresh, so I swapped the Edelbrock Performer intake for that of a 93 Cobra intake. Well, simply because the 93 Cobra intake looks better. The FMU and 24 pound injectors were removed and in its place went 42 pound injectors with a properly calibrated mass airflow meter from Pro-M. Back on the dyno, it went with hopes of a decent number. The very first pull fuel pressure immediately dropped, so I aborted the run. From here, fuel pressure was obviously our issue. I checked over the hard lines just to make sure they weren't crushed and I even replaced the two rubber hoses near the frame rail. I dropped the tank to inspect the fuel pump and the wiring. The S hose did have a small tear in it, so I replaced it along with the fuel pump in hopes that that was the issue. After reinstalling the tank and starting the car, fuel pressure was still the issue. At this point, I was about to throw an entire fuel system at this thing because I knew you guys would appreciate a detailed how-to video on installing a full fuel system into a Fox Mustang. Well, with more and more troubleshooting, it came down to ditching the T-Rex pump and dropping the tank again to outfit the car with an Aeromotive 340 liter per hour fuel pump. Here's when it gets pretty crazy, guys. Upon removal of the fuel pump bracket and S-hose, a small glimmer of blue exposed itself from the supply line. After all of this back and forth nonsense, there ended up being a damn butt connector in the supply line of the fuel pump bracket. Now don't ask me how that got there, but more than likely it did get there from the previous owner and the S hose that they put on the car probably had a butt connector wiggle its way in since those components do come in an installation kit that are all inside of a little baggie. Guys, I can't make this up. That butt connector in that fuel pump bracket supply line, it's real freaking life. Once all that was sorted and the tank was reinstalled, I fired the car up, gave it a few revs, and finally the fuel pressure issue was solved. Little did I know there was going to be a butt connector in the supply line of the fuel pump bracket, so in all reality, the FMU and the T-Rex, they could have stayed. Also, while I had the car in the air addressing the Aeromotive 340 pump, I installed an SVE off-road H-pipe and a Flowmaster American Thunder catback with the correct tips for an LX. Now, after all the waiting and agony on my end, getting this thorn in my ass car figured out, let's strap it to the rollers and see what this thing can do. Hot damn, how does 375 horsepower and 403 pound-feet of torque sound? From our baseline run of 257 horsepower and 293 pound-feet of torque, this Vortex Supercharger kit was good for peak gains of 118 horsepower and 110 pound-feet of torque. It's also gonna provide well over 100 horsepower and torque throughout the curve. Guys, I'm sorry it took this long, but from trying to troubleshoot this car and our day-to-day -day video schedule to keep content rolling out to you guys, it was tough to balance both. 
I hope you all have enjoyed my detailed installation process on this Vortec V3 Supercharger Kit as much as I have enjoyed showing you. Now, if there is anything to take away from this, never, and I mean never, take Fox Mustangs for granted. Until next time, guys, you can count on us, the real, the only Fox Mustang enthusiasts, LMR.com.